hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well and today we'll be doing a box office preview for this upcoming weekend which sees the brand new film Bullet Train coming out. A film that I actually have a little bit of excitement for despite the fact that apparently critics are not that fond of it. Which actually now that I think about it makes me even more excited for the film as we all know how critics tend to judge films these days. But before going any further though, please make sure that you smash that like button, a lot of that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on, that way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So Bullet Train, this is a film that I have been saying for a couple weeks now, actually for probably a couple months now, that I think might actually end up doing better at the box office than what some people and some box office office, you know, so-called box office experts might say, only because I think that the day of ticket sales, which is something that is very hard to account for, oftentimes when you look at people who make projections on the box office, they'll look at trends, they'll look at social media, they'll look at pre-sales, and those are all good metrics, but the metric that is always the most difficult to be able to actually project is that day of sales because the vast majority of people, I want to say recent studies showed that about 60% or so of people who go to see any movie buy their ticket on the day at the actual theater themselves. Having worked at a theater several years ago, I remember that it was still true then, probably even more true then, obviously since the time of COVID and and everything with the, with the pandemic, people have more than likely been more apt to buy tickets online or in advance. Um, especially now since you can reserve your seat and it can be a little bit more convenient in that respect. But the fact still remains that m the vast majority of people will still buy their tickets on the actual day, which is why you'll see in certain projections some films making a lot less than what they originally projected and some films making a lot more than originally projected because really the the big metric that is, is one that's always hard to quantify is that word of mouth effect, right? We look at Top Gun Maverick as having a very strong word of mouth effect, which is why that film's now crossed $1.3 billion worldwide but then you also look to films like Doctor Strange or Thor Love and Thunder or uh, Jurassic World Dominion, which may have had strong starts or larger weekends, but because of very bad word of mouth, because audiences were not as drawn to those films, you started to recognize and realize the drop-offs from week to week to week meant those initial numbers, which indicated that they could have been much bigger than what they ended up being ended up not actually being the case. Now, granted, Jurassic World Dominion still made over $950 million, still made massive profits, made its money back. Uh, you have Thor Love and Thunder, which just recently made its money back after four weeks, which is a whole other story, and I've talked about that on the channel before previously. And then you also have Doctor Strange, which also made hundreds of millions in net gain profits, but based off of its opening weekend, should have been a billion-dollar film, but it dropped off so heavily, especially every single given week, it just was not able to reach that point. So, this is the reason why, when it comes to the projections for films like Bullet Train, which right now the numbers is rather Box Office Pro, is saying is projected to make somewhere around $35 million in its opening weekend, is something that it could end up being just right. It could also end up being under or lowballing the film, or it could end up being kind of overstating the film. I personally, this is where it comes down to what I've been saying the last several weeks, I think Bullet Train has the potential to be a much bigger success than what some of these numbers might indicate. And the only reason why is because I saw the trailer for this film. I remember seeing the trailer for the first time in theaters. And at first, I had no idea what was going on because I was like, oh, this is a new film. Okay, all right, I'm liking the music. Oh, Brad Pitt's in it. I don't know about that. But then as the trailer went on, I said, hey, you know what? This is a really good trailer. This is a really well-made trailer. This is a trailer that actually makes me want to go see the film. This is appealing to an audience member like me who likes these types of action films that seem also very fun. Having Brad Pitt have that moment of, dude, I don't even know you, made me laugh. I thought that was hilarious every time I see it. Every time I see that moment in the trailer, as many times as I've seen that trailer, whenever I go to see any movie, it still makes me smile. It still makes me smile. And so if the movie then is able to deliver that same kind of humor, that same type of action, having, uh, you know, obviously I've always appreciated films that have um, a lot more attention to stunts and, and stunt uh, teams, etc., then it's a film that I think then could have a very positive effect on the audience who's going to see it, and those audiences are going to ultimately decide whether or not this film is going to make uh, really any money whatsoever because of the budget for the film. So $35 million is the projected number right now. Box Office Pro has the range for this film to be somewhere in the 30 to $40 million range. So again, 30 to $40 million range. And I suspect, and I think, again, I have nothing other than my own sentiment as a moviegoer myself to say, that if the movie's good, that's going to be the big factor here. Because I think the trailer is the reason why the number has ticked up. When you looked at 
uh, original projections for this film, it was actually in the 20s. It really has gone up quite a bit over the last several months um, in, in the projections for it. And so I think that that is something that is definitely worth noting is that it seems that the trailer has had an impact on people actually having more interest and general interest in the film. So the, now, the, the next question and the next real task that Bullet Train has is it has to be able to convince the audience that it's a good enough film to tell a friend or two, hey, yeah, you should go see that film. Or, hey, yeah, that film's a lot of fun. And that is still something that remains to be seen. Now, the critics have come out and weighed in to say that the film isn't all that great. If we look to this article from Deadline, by way of MSN, Bullet Train to chug summer box office with last hurrah of a $60 million global start. So it's projected to make $35, 30 to $35 million domestically and another $30 million in the international markets as well. But it points out here to say that it is the last big temple of the summer that has grossed $2.9 billion through, uh, I guess this is talking about Sony, making $2.9 billion domestic through the end of July per com score. 142% up from the same pandemic period a year ago. Um, it then goes on to say, however, bullet train start gets uh, get ready for a two and a half month dry period that's greatly lacking mass appealing films, but crowded with adult counter programming. Worldwide estimates for bullet train are at $60 million with at least $30 million stateside for this rated R flick. It then goes on to say, even though the Rotten Tomatoes critic score is low uh, on the film at 58%, the hope is that the good word of mouth off of the Rotten Tomatoes audience score will trigger an over-indexing here for the feature take of Kotaro Isaka's 2010 thriller novel. So this is based off of a novel, but also as you can see there, this film's budget was $90 million, and that is before you take into account any marketing cost. And so that means that this break-even point for this movie is roughly around $225 million. And so a $60 million start is not really all that great in comparison to that break-even point. However, as the article points out, what they're banking on and what I myself think is going to be the ultimate factor, and it's the ultimate factor for a lot of films, but when you look to uh, movies that have massive openings, even films that have very bad word of mouth, like the examples that I gave earlier, like Doctor Strange 2, etc., were still able to make their money back, were still able to be you know, very profitable because they were able to get the people out there in those initial couple of weeks. In the case of Bullet Train, it's looking like it's not going to get a lot of people in its opening weekend, but if the film is good... So it's gotten me with the trailer. Now it's just got to be good because if the film is good, if the film is entertaining, guess what? I'm going to come back tonight because I have my ticket to go see it. Uh, I have my ticket to go see it tonight and um, very, very excited to go see it in IMAX, especially not too crowded of a theater at this point in time, which again is to be expected. That $30 million is definitely one where it's on the lower end of things. However, it is interesting nonetheless that uh, in this dynamic, in this current market that we are in when it comes to the box office, that it is going to be so crucial. Um, and I think that this is really going to be the pathway going forward is how do you create a positive vibe, positive word of mouth? I would not be surprised if studios start to really hem and focus more so on how do we create positive word of mouth campaigns. Now, I think the easiest way to do that, of course, would be to make good movies, to make good movies that are entertaining, that naturally will bring people out to say, hey, you should go see that movie, just like Top Gun Maverick. However, I would not be surprised if studios try to grasp that in some way, try to commodify it in some way, because that's just the nature of what studios do. Regardless of that, though, the $225 million break-even point is quite steep, and so if the film is able to reach the point that it needs to reach, and is able to get positive word of mouth, we could then see this Sony Pictures, and Sony has been one of the most successful as far as box office studios is concerned. It had, of course, the massive hit in Spider-Man No Way Home, of which it got 75% of the box office receipts. Disney got the other 25%. Sony has a good track record in this specific case when it comes to the box office. It's been very successful in almost every single one, if not all, of their releases. And so Bullet Train could be another one. So that $90 million budget, though it is high and though it means that the film has to do quite well in order to get to that point... It is something that is going to be interesting to follow as these things go on. It says, stateside, where your bullet train is solid with guys over 35. Well, that's actually a very good sign because that means that you have a lot of money that could be made from that crowd. The hope is that the dynamic movie going 18 to 34 demographic shows up big. Preview start Thursday at 3 p.m. in 3,600 locations. The picture will be booked at 4,000 screens. So it's got a very large... Um, uh, it's got a very large stamp on the movie-going industry with a lot of theaters and a lot of um, eyes on it. But that's going to be the big question is, what do the audience think about this? Are the, audi are the audiences going to be excited for this? And uh, yeah, are we going to see this film end up being a major success? I personally think that it's going to over 
perform. Uh, if it's not just this weekend, I think it could overperform next weekend. But all of it, again, major caveat is it's got to be a good movie. And so I will definitely be able to come back and let y'all know what my own personal thoughts are about the film, whether or not it's worth seeing or not. So expect that review out later tonight when I get back from the actual theater. We also do have some other numbers here. We have DC League of Super Pets, which is expected to drop 47% from its second or for its second weekend, making another $12.1 million. This is not a very good sign. This film, again, also is one that has quite a, uh, a steep price tag on it. It also needs to make $225 million. And with that number, it is not looking very, very, it's not looking very good to say the least. Even though that 47% drop is not a large percentage drop because its opening weekend was low, it means that this film's going to have to it's going to have to have a lot of legs. It's going to have to have very small drops from this point going forward, which could be very difficult in the current market, even in a dry market, even in a market where we're not having major tentpole items and tentpole films coming out. That does not mean that people are just going to go to see a film. Right? Again, I've made this point previously before. Nope is expected to have another 47% drop as well, getting to $100 million domestically. Again, this film still needs to make another $70 million or so to break even. And with the film expected to open in international markets starting, I believe, this week and also further extending out into next weekend. It's looking like that might be more and more possible. However, to say this film is going to be as successful as far as net gain is concerned compared to the other Jordan Peele films, that is not looking to be the case. Thor 11 Thunder, 38% drop, making another $8.2 million, $317.1 million domestically. Again, this movie has made its money back. It's making profit, but it's definitely going to be, by the end of its run, one of the lowest grossing MCU films of all time. And I think that is saying something. You then also have Minions, The Rise of Gru, which has been a pretty big success, made over $700 million, um, is, is easily beating Thor, Love, and Thunder in many different metrics. And even though it is definitely not as successful as the previous Minions film, when you take into account the large franchise, the number of films, kind of the oversaturation of the entire dynamic of that specific franchise, and also some other factors like films getting re not getting released in certain countries, it starts to make a little bit more sense. The main point to be made, though, is that Thor Love and Thunder, not having a China release, for instance, similar to Doctor Strange not having a China release, $200 million difference there. By, by the end of its run, probably a $200 million difference between those two films. So that is clearly a lost audience between those two films. You then also look at Thor Ragnarok, and even though some might say, yeah, but China, but China, but China, yeah, but if you take away China's numbers there, you're still looking at a movie that is is just not performing nearly as well. Top Gun Maverick, though, on the other hand, still at still going to be out at over 3,000 or around 3,000 screens, making 6.8 million dollars, 19% hold. It'll be interesting. Will this film be able to pass up Star Wars: The Last Jedi this weekend? I think it has the potential to do that. Uh, and again, that's the adjusted for uh, adjusted for inflation numbers for The Last Jedi. I think that has the potential to do that. It could get very close to 1.4 billion dollars either by this weekend or next weekend. That's going to be very exciting to see. See, really depends on those international markets. Crawdad Singh is still hanging around. Easter Sunday is a brand new release, and even though it's coming out at over 3,200 screens, not a lot of people going to see it. And I will say, when you have a film called Easter Sunday not coming out during Easter, I don't think you're really wanting the film to do well, Universal. It's just my guess. <laughs> it's just it's just my own uh, prediction there. When it comes to Easter Sunday, the budget was $17 million, so it does not have to make that much money. It needs to make $42.5 million. But uh, this kind of an opening weekend not looking all that great, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see if word of mouth is going to be able to help this film. Elvis still hanging around as well. Very good word of mouth has pushed this film over the edge to the point of making a, a little bit of profits. And then the Black Phone also hanging around, and it has been profitable for quite a while at this point. But those are the numbers as they currently stand. So what are y'all's thoughts? Are you going to see Bullet Train? Are you excited for Bullet train do you think it's going to be any good do you think it's going to have good word of mouth um let me know in, in, in if you thought that the trailer was something that made you want to go see the film or not and again i think that it has the chance if it's good that's the big factor right now at this point is the film going to be good Critics remarks don't really mean a whole lot in today's world because Rotten Tomatoes is a broken system and the critics are clearly biased towards woke identity politics nonsense. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this film is going to be able to have that entertainment value that general audiences can find more entertaining. So let me know your thoughts about that. And anything else I mentioned in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, lap that fire button, Aussie. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.
And now for a huge shout out to all of my Keeper of the Bifrost and Chosen of Valhalla members over on Patreon, Subscribestar, and Locals. Starting off with my Patreon supporters, we got Chris from the 80s, who you can check out on YouTube, Garrett Searles, Hymir Irie Hymason, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Father Luca Illich, Orange Hat Reviews, who you can also check out on YouTube, Rosetta Allen, whose YouTube channel's name is Eagle Rider, Stan Andrian, Miss Martin Muses, who also has a YouTube channel, and the Empress of the Universe, Tina B, who you can check out on her show that she does with the amazing Stephanie B, my Valkyrie, uh, on a show called Soup to Nuts on Tina B's channel. Also to my subscribe star peeps, we got Matt317, who you can support over on Twitch, same name, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Mr. Roy, J-Rod, The Beer Guru, and ZK Man, who you can support over at xthebounderies.co. And lastly, to my locals members, we got Miss Minnesota Hockey Fan, How About a Hockey Player, we have UAB Mad Dog, Mike Jackson, for the win, Brett D90, and Robert Barnes, who most people should know about at this point, so go support him over at InfoWars uh, YouTube and all the other locations that he is at. But if you want your name shout out at the end of every single video and live stream, check out that top link in the video description. Finds out all the places that you can follow me on social media and also all the various platforms that you can support the channel, which include not only shout outs, but also access to giveaways of 4K titles, Blu-rays, uh, tons of other stuff uh, like that digital codes. And then also... Uh, a way to get access to being featured on the channel once a month for the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where we're talking about movies, pop culture, and pretty much anything the Chosen want to talk about. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the video description. There's also a access to a podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger once or twice a month. And don't worry if you were wondering where the July episode is because of scheduling conflicts, especially with John, we were not able to get that done, but we will have two episodes this month to make up for it. So don't you worry about that. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always... God bless.